So thus far in our discussions, we were able to devise a way to produce our alcohols from alkenes that are the more substituted alcohols. So in this lecture and the following lecture, we're going to discuss a mechanism known as hydroboration of alkenes that will allow us to produce our alcohols from alkenes that are the less substituted. So in this lecture, we're going to focus on the structure of our hydroborons as well as the mechanism of this reaction called hydroboration. So let's begin by discussing the structure of alkene and comparing it to the structure of our boron. So boron is bonded to three H atoms and that means boron is sp2 hybridized. It also contains an empty 2p orbital. So by definition this molecule, our hydroboron, can act as a Lewis acid. So the boron has an empty 2p orbital that can act as a Lewis acid. On the other hand, the alkene contains a pair of electrons in the pi bond. And that means by definition, it can act as a Lewis base. So here we have a Lewis acid and a Lewis base. When we react these two molecules, we should technically get some type of reaction. The reaction will be a Lewis base and a Lewis acid reaction. So, now, from experiments, we know that hydroboration, one, does not produce rearrangements, and two, does not produce multiple diastereomers. So, number one implies that we can't have a carbocation intermediate because carbocation intermediates lead to rearrangements. So that means one implies that we should have one step mechanism a concentric mechanism. Now, number two implies that we should have syn addition and not anti-addition. Anti-addition will produce diastereomers, while syn addition will produce only one of those diastereomers. And since from experiment, that's exactly what we observe, our mechanism for our hydroboration reaction should include these two points. So let's devise our mechanism. What is actually going on between the boron, between the MT2P orbital, and this filled pi bond, our Lewis base and Lewis acid. So once again, we have a one-step mechanism in which we have a transition state and we have an addition from the sin side, from the same side as seen here. So what happens is the pi bond interacts with this open empty 2p orbital and at the same time the pair of electrons in this bond between the boron and the H breaks off and goes on to this carbon. So our intermediate or our transition state looks like this. Our pi bond and this boron H bond are partially broken while this boron carbon and the carbon H bond are partially formed. Notice that this carbon H bond is slightly longer than this carbon boron bond and that's because we have difference in electronegativity and we'll see why that's important in just a moment. Now once the transition state uh, is created it will go to this molecule. So notice this transition state is not a molecule that can be isolated. It exists only as a transition state as an energy maxima and it will only exist for a very short period of time. It will convert to this product. So we go from reacting to product in which we have a carbon boron bond and the carbon H bond that we see forming in our transition state. So once again, we have, or the mechanism for hydroboration is a syn addition of our BR3, in our case BH3, to our alkene. Now, what we haven't mentioned so far is that the boron approaches from the less substituted side. In other words, because this was a symmetrical alkene and because all the bonds were identical, it did not matter where this boron approached. If it approached from this, from this side onto this carbon or from the other side onto this carbon, we will produce the same exact molecule because we have a symmetrical alkene, a symmetrical alkene. But Suppose our alkene was not symmetrical. Suppose instead of these two H groups, we had methyl groups, so larger, more sterically hindering groups. 
So now it does matter from which side our boron, our 2p orbital approaches. If the 2p orbital of the boron approaches from this side, from the more sterically hindering side, we're going to see bumping of our atoms. So the protons and the electrons will repel one another. The electrons found on this H atom and the electrons found on these methyl groups will repel as well as the protons found in the boron nucleus and protons found in these nuclei of these methyl groups. So approach of the boron from the more substituted side leads to bumping of electrons and protons increasing electrostatic repulsion. On the other hand, if our boron, the relatively larger group approaches from the less sterically hindered side, from this side, we will have less bumping of atoms as seen here. The bumping will be much less and so this will be a very stabilizing effect and our boron will have more ease to approach from this side. Now this is only one reason why our boron approaches from this less substituted side. The second reason has to do with our transition state that I mentioned earlier. Recall that I said this carbon H bond will be slightly longer than this carbon Br bond, the, the partially formed bonds. And that means the following will take place. Because this will be slightly longer, what happens is this develops, this carbon develops a partially positive side. And this boron develops a partially negative sign. On the same time, if we flip these guys, and if our boron approaches from the more sterically hindered side, now we have the opposite situation in which our partial positive charge forms on this carbon, the less substituted carbon, while the partial negative charge forms on the boron. So notice, if the boron approaches the less substituted side, the transition state will be stabilized because the partial positive charge will be on the more substituted, in this case, the tertiary carbocation versus, in this case, our primary carbocation. So in the same way that our carbocations are stabilized when they're more substituted, our transition state for the same reason will also be stabilized. So, once again, the mechanism for hydroboration is a syn addition from the same side of our hydroboron to the alkene in which our boron approaches from the less substituted side because of two reasons. One, because of steric reasons, because the boron is relatively larger, so that means it wants to approach from the less sterically hindered side, and for reason number two, because our transition state is stabilized if it approaches from the less substituted side, because of the formation of this partial positive charge. So we see that our hydroboration reaction is a one-step concentric mechanism, a syn addition from the less substituted side. Now notice in this product, we still have this empty 2p orbital formed, and we have two more H atoms. In fact, as we'll see in the following lecture, this reaction can occur two more times in which both of these H atoms are substituted with these alkenes, as we'll see in the following lecture.